Hey, what's happening YouTube? Back again with another DIY. Today, we are gonna fix our iPad Air screen. As you can see, it has cracked all over the place. I'm actually really impressed that it survived these five years since release date. Usually my eye devices don't fare quite as well. As some of you may know, I've fixed probably 10 or 15 iPhone screens. This is gonna be my first iPad screen. It is a little tougher than an iPhone screen, I'm not gonna lie, but it is completely doable for the extreme DIYer like yourself. So come on back after the intro and I will show you how you can do this on your own and save yourself a few bucks. Alright, so tools you're going to need for the job. Um, obviously you're going to need one of these little packets. Typically they're going to come in uh, whatever kind of screen replacement kit that you buy online. And I will link down below where you can get a good screen replacement. And it will include a pack of your basic tools like this. You can always upgrade to something a little nicer. Kind of dusty. It makes the job a little bit easier, but it's definitely not necessary. Sometimes X-Acto knives and switch blades come in handy. So if you have either one of these, might as well add it to the arsenal. And I really like these magnetic mats. Um, I would say this is pretty important. What I typically do is this is like whiteboard. So you can take a whiteboard marker and you can write notes like step one, put a circle and then put your screws that you removed. It's very important, any screws that you remove out of this, every screw's a different size and you, you can't just throw your screws in one little pile because you're not gonna know which screw goes where and then, well, you're gonna be screwed. I know that was bad. Obviously, you're gonna need a screen replacement. Like I said before, I'll have a link down below where you can get all this stuff. Everything that you're gonna need, I will have linked down below, so check that out. And it does go to help support my small channel which I'm rapidly trying to grow, so I do appreciate the support. Click those links, it'll take you to Amazon. I always link the best prices at the time, so uh, you know you can rest assured that they're gonna be decent prices on decent stuff. You're also gonna need either a heat gun, which is preferable, but you do have to be careful with them because you can melt electronics and stuff if you stay too long in one spot. If you don't feel comfortable using a heat gun, you're afraid you're gonna melt something, then you can use a blow dryer on high heat, it's a little bit safer of a bet, but I'm gonna be using the heat gun. All right, one more really important thing you're gonna need, guys, is Kapton tape right here. Um, this is super important to put around the inside edges of your new display. And last but definitely not least, probably the most important tool that you're gonna need is a hammer. Just kidding, you don't need a hammer. All right, that's pretty much it for the tools, guys. Um, you might wanna grab some coffee, because it's gonna take a little while and some patience, but that's everything you need. So without further ado, let me get this camera up here, pointing down, and um, let's get to it. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna do is heat up this side of the iPad with our heat gun. Now, we've got the home button here, so this is the left side of the iPad. So the reason we're doing this is because there's adhesive that is actually attaching the screen to down to the iPad, and we're gonna heat it up on this side first, and then we're gonna take a suction cup. Once it's hot enough, we'll be able to kind of pry that up and slip our pick underneath. So as you can see, since it's cracked right here, <clears throat> couldn't really get a good suction on it. So I'm just gonna kind of start over here where it's broken and then just start sliding it over. All right, now I'm gonna take a second pick and just start from here. Yeah, this one's this one's actually thinner. Now, if you see your pick go past this black bezel, you wanna pull it back. You don't wanna push adhesive onto your LCD screen. All right, now we're gonna work on this one again. This time we're gonna move this pick up towards this corner and around and we're gonna stop just shy of the camera right here.
All right, now we're going to take another pick and slide it just about this deep across the top. And then we're gonna slide it deeper and try to go all the way to this corner. All right, now we're gonna work this corner. Now this is a little tricky because we've got a couple antennas right around this area. So we're gonna take our pick and only go in this direction. Don't come back towards the outside um, or you could damage the antenna. And then once we get to the home button, we're gonna leave this pick here, grab another pick, and we're gonna, just using the tip, go all the way out to here, and then we're gonna go deeper and only come this direction because there's another antenna here and going this way could actually damage that. So we're gonna come this way towards the home button. And then again on this side, we're only gonna go this direction toward the home button. Now again, we're just doing the tip all the way to the corner. And then we're gonna insert it all the way in. Bring it forward over that antenna. Now, what I'm gonna do is, since this is so jacked up over here, all of this is loose, all of this is loose. So I'm just gonna start lifting up the screen. I'm gonna heat this up here and just kinda pull it apart like that. Just kinda see where you're caught up. I'm caught up somewhere over here. I still have some adhesive that needs to be removed. With a little bit of leverage, it just peels right up. All right, so now we're gonna remove the LCD display by unscrewing these four screws here, here. There's one behind this flap here, right there, and then right there. So this one, this one, and this one are the same size. They're a little bit smaller. This one here is a little bit longer. So however you wanna organize that, I got my three over here together and I've got my one over here and they're both under step one. So now we're gonna lift up the LCD from the front facing camera side. Do not try to remove the bottom home button side because there are several things still attached to the LCD. kind of lay it flat like that. Sorry about that guys, my camera cut out. Um, the step I just did was just removing these three screws from the uh, display cable bracket. And now we're just going to pry this display cable bracket up, straight up. And that's it for the LCD. Now I'll put this in a safe place. You don't want this to be harmed at all. This is the home button ribbon cable that comes right here so we're going to remove this next so actually when I removed this adhesive this ZIF connector lever also came up which was the next step let me try to zoom in here so here's the tape that I pried off and as you can see right here that is a ZIF connector lever, which secures the home button cable. So I just need to be pried up. Once it's up, which it is now, then you can pull the home button ribbon cable straight that way, like so. Okay, now we're gonna remove these two digitizer cables here and here, just using the flat end of our spudger. Now when you do this, make sure you don't go in too deep and pry on the actual connector on the logic board because you don't want to rip that off the logic board. 
or that. So you make sure you're not prying up on this. Now we can remove our broken digitizer. It's just gonna be adhesive that is keeping it down now. Okay, so now we're gonna take a look around the entire frame of the iPad where the digitizer was glued. This is where we were melting and peeling. So this area here, as you can see here, there's some still on here. So we're just gonna kind of scrape that off and get it cleaned up. Oh, and as you can see, there's a lot over here. There's a lot here, so we need to actually peel all of that up. All right, before we install our new digitizer, uh, it's a good idea to go ahead and take some rubbing alcohol to it to just kind of clean up everything so the new tape will adhere well to the frame of the iPad. So what I do is just take my scraper, I spray some alcohol right on it, and then just start scraping. Okay, we are ready to prep the new digitizer now. So the one that we have has the tape pre-mounted all the way around. So when we're ready to install it, we'll just peel all of this off. But before we do that, we have to stick this down. These are all of our cables, our ribbon cables. This actually needs to fold up like this. You can see this has some sticky tape that we need to peel off as well and then we're going to need to fold it and if you look at your old screen you'll you'll see exactly how it needs to be folded exactly how close to the inside edge of the bezel it needs to be um, and you do not this is very important <clears throat> you do not want to flatten the outside edge once you adhere it like this and fold it over and it's stuck down do not flatten this round part out or you will ruin your display this needs to stay kind of rounded like this and what's going to happen is this rounded edge here is going to actually fit down inside of this area right here when this folds over that rounded part right here that you leave is going to fit right inside of there it cannot fold flat if it folds flat you will ruin the display all right so we're going to go ahead and peel this off now Okay, that looks good to me. Now we're just going to kind of stick it down like so. We do want to make sure it adheres, but this part is the part that I was talking about. Do not flatten that out. That needs to stay rounded. Now we're gonna do the same thing to the other side. So what we're gonna do now is going to prevent what is called ghost touching. These points right here, if these are exposed, they are most likely going to touch something metal in here and it's going to short out the display so that icons are touched and things are done on the display and you're not even touching anything. They call that ghost touching. So we definitely don't want that or we're going to have to um, take this off and, and do everything all over. So to prevent that we've got some stuff here called Kapton tape. It's just super super thin insulative tape that uh, we're going to peel off and we're actually going to put over in these areas here on our home button. It's gonna do a couple things. It's gonna prevent that shorting out and ghost touching and it's gonna stick our uh, ribbon down so it, it doesn't move around.
This doesn't have to be perfect. Obviously, it's just there for those two reasons. As long as it doesn't go past the black bezel and into the viewable part, you'll be fine. Now we're gonna put another little piece and we're gonna tape it across here. All right, so the first thing we're gonna install is the home ribbon cable and that just slides in like so. Doesn't really go in too far and then we push down that zip connector. And it locks it into place. Now there is a piece of double-sided tape on the back side of this. So we'll go ahead and remove that now. We're just gonna go straight up from the zip connector and then push that down into place. Before we attach these connectors, I'm at least gonna remove this portion of the adhesive because once those are down, uh, it just might be kinda hard to get to. All right, now we're just gonna kinda line these up and snap them into place. There it goes, you'll just hear it snap into place. I almost forgot to reinstall this little black piece of tape over the home button ribbon cable, but that should be installed. Alright, so now we're bringing back our LCD screen and we're going to install this third connector here. So now we can just line up the holes and it should just snap right in, which it has. Now we install these mounting screws. All right, now we're gonna flip the LCD over and install it. Remember, these three are the same size, and this one is the longer one. Now we're gonna remove the remainder of the double-sided sticky tape. Now before we remove the inside protective film, uh, the digitizer, we're going to make sure that our LCD is dust free. And we'll just take a little microfiber and fingerprint free too. I see lots of fingerprints. You know, you're handling this thing, so it may have some prints. If it does, we're just gonna take a little bit of alcohol here, give a little spray, and we're just gonna go lightly over it and remove the fingerprints. Now we just kind of lightly buff it to get out any streaks. Take your time and do it right. That looks good enough to me. So, time to remove the inside protective film. And we're very carefully, very carefully going to insert. Try to get it on camera, but it may not show everything. You need to make sure that that goes down where it needs to go. That's looking pretty good. Making sure we have good fitment on all the edges. Everything should be flush, perfectly flush. Now I'm gonna remove the outside layer. Now we're gonna hit the outside edges with a heat gun. And as we do, we'll go over it with a microfiber just to kind of um, heat up the adhesive and uh, adhere it down as good as can be. All 
right. <clears throat> I just went over it twice. Twice while heating it. We'll go over it one more time as it cools. All right, looks good. Just kind of visually inspect the edges. Everything should be the way it was before. Check your lines. Everything looks perfectly flush. Now we'll just fire it up and see what happens. I'm gonna stick a charger on it real quick. All right, fired right up. And let's cross our fingers. There it is. Okay, moment of truth. Oh, <laughs> nice test. Swiping seems to work okay. All right, home button seems to work okay. Now, a good way to test if you have ghosting issues is if you touch the bezel, put pressure on the bezel, especially in this area where all of our ribbon cables are. If you press in these areas and it acts like you're touching the actual screen and it opens up apps and does all kinds of crazy stuff, then that means you are having ghost issues. So we don't seem to be having any of those. We'll test up here real quick. Everything seems to be fine. So we did it guys. Thanks for sticking with me. If you like this video and would like to see more similar content, please give it a like and subscribe to my channel. I am pumping out similar DIYs on how to fix cars and appliances and electronics and all kinds of hacks and mods. A lot more unboxings and reviews and things like that as well. I'm going to be unboxing a 3D printer probably in my next video. If you have any questions on the process or anything at all, leave me a comment and I will do my best to get back with you. Until next time, guys, thanks for tuning in, and we'll catch you later. Testing, 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 testing. Today we're going to fix our iPad screen, testing the volume, volume. Hey, if you watch my channel, that's the kind of jokes you get. <laughs>